And that was of value. So pray and say, Lord, help me to see others better than myself. And one of the ways you do for that, do that is verse 4, let each one of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So it's not just what's good for me, but how can I minister to this individual or other individuals? What can I do to help you? What can I do to serve you? We all use that expression, but do we use it with meaning? How may I help you? Some businesses are instructed to answer the phone that way. How may I help you? And they know what they can do and what they can't do. And so, Lord, how can I help people today? Is there somebody who needs me? There's always somebody who has a need. So, Lord, help me to get beyond myself. Now, let's get into the example of Jesus Christ. He's humble, verses 5 through 8, and he's exalted. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is your submissive mind the mind of Jesus Christ. And in verse 5, he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And this time going through it, the word let really leapt off the page in me. He didn't say create in yourself, develop in yourself, exercise in yourself the mind of Christ. He simply said, let it happen. Meaning, it's not created by me, it's not designed by me, it's designed by God. All I have to do is just allow it to happen. A stream has flowing water flowing down the stream. What does the stream have to do to allow the water to flow down? Just let it flow. If it's dammed up, then of course it doesn't flow. But as the stream receives it, the flow is beautiful and endless. And you and I can just let the mind of Christ, which is already in us, through Jesus Christ, let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, he's talking about a humble mind and a submissive mind. But I like to use this scripture to describe the mind of Christ as far as his intelligence, his love, his compassion, whatever his mind is able to do, I have that because I have him in me. So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And here it demonstrates that mind in operation. Who being in the form of God, being in the natural form of God, being God, when you're in the form of God, you are God. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He didn't consider that something that he had to hold on to because he was almost not there. He barely qualified and therefore he had to grasp onto it. Absolutely not. He was God completely, has always been God. Didn't have to reach for it, didn't have to hold on to it. But here is his submissive mind in verse 7. He made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. He made himself of no reputation. He never emptied himself of deity. He always was God. He was as much God as a baby in Bethlehem as he was from all eternity. But he emptied himself of the prerogatives and the privileges. Many of the privileges of just being God and just to be a man himself would be a very humbling experience. Somebody once said, can you imagine if one of us had the burden to save the ant world, the few little ants that crawl all around, and you had a desire to be an ant, and you were able to humble yourself and become an ant, 
to reach all the ants to try to save them? Would that be a high calling for you? I'd rather give that to somebody else, wouldn't you? And yet Jesus, coming to be a man, humbled himself far more than you and I would if we tried to save the ant world. In any event, he made himself of no reputation. He took the form of a bond servant, not just a man, but a man who comes to serve others. And he came in the likeness of men. And when you're in the likeness of man, you are man. It's important for us to remember that Jesus came fully as God and embraced full humanity as well. He was fully God, he was fully man. Today he is fully God and he is fully man. And verse 8, he was found in appearance as a man because he was truly a man. And he humbled himself not just in birth, not just in life, but he humbled himself even in death. He became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And that was a struggle for him. We have a little glimpse of that in the Garden of Gethsemane when he cries out three times, Father, if it's possible, let this cup, this cup of suffering, pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Now, that's his humbling, his lowering of himself. But what does God do when you humble yourself? When you humble yourself, God will lift you up. And Jesus humbled himself more than any man, and God will lift him up higher than any man. He already has, and that exaltation will continue. Verse 9, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus has been given a name above all names. Now he has a number of names to describe his mission and his character, but his name, the name that the angel said his mother was to name him and the Father, is the name Jesus. And Jesus really means the Lord is salvation. It comes from the Hebrew Jehovah Shua, the Lord is our Savior. It becomes Joshua in the Hebrew, Jesus in the Greek, Jesus to us in the English. So it's the name of the Lord is Savior, our salvation. So God has exalted him, verse 9. He raised him up to be not only resurrected but ascended has given him this name above all other names. And one day, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, everybody in heaven, everybody on earth, everybody in the grave. They're all going to hear that, and as the tongue is confessing that he is Lord, it's going to be to the glory of God the Father. Now that means that everybody, saved and unsaved, is going to have to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee will bow. Every person who's saved, every person who's not saved. Every demonic spirit, every angelic being. Now, when they bow their knee, and when they confess that he's Lord, it's not going to be to their salvation. Because you only have, while you're alive, to be saved. Hebrews tells us, it's appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. But they will have to bow their knee and confess that he's Lord, simply because he is. Unfortunately, it's too late for them to be saved. But for us today, it is not too late. We can confess Him as Lord. We can humble ourselves, bow our knee to Him. And as we do, we receive His salvation. But this passage here is talking about the submissive mind, His humility and His exaltation. And He tells us the same thing is necessary for us, that if we want to be great in God's kingdom, Learn to be the what? The servant of all. Now that's not the way the world teaches us. You want to be great in the world from school, and business on, work harder, have more connections, cut a few corners, cheat when you're not going to be caught, and do all that you can to get ahead. And as one person that dad knew did to his partner. I will kind of translate it because it's church. If you have a part, you have a friend and he's true blue, you mm, him before he mm, 
you. Okay, so you can fill in the blank. So you get the other guy, because if you don't, he'll be coming to get you. So that's the world's philosophy. The Lord says, no, quite to the contrary. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be a servant. Lower yourself and serve. Take the towel, as Jesus did on that last night during the Last Supper. Begin to wash the feet of others. And as you do, God will lift you up and give you more opportunities to serve. And so we look at the church hierarchy the way it should be. And we see a pastor or we see an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist. And we think, now how did they get to that position? Because they muscled their way or studied harder or knew connections or because they served their way to that position. That's how you get to be a leader in God's kingdom. You give and you give and you give, no matter what the situation might be. If that's in your heart, then this is the great joy. People have asked me, and understandably, how do you feel now that your family is pretty much in heaven? My immediate family is there now. And, uh, I've got my immediate family in the back room here, my four dogs. Uh, when mother passed, obviously I was saddened to see her go, but grateful to see her with the Lord. But I came to realize over the last few months that I had a new life, a life that I had always wanted and a life that for me was just perfect. And that was a life of total freedom, 24 hours a day, to serve. My unsaved stepsister understood this, and she told me after I was thinking about this, she called me about two weeks ago and she said, Jer, my husband has just retired as a doctor at the emergency room in San Francisco, and he's now retired and he's windsurfing and he's following his dream. You are in much the same situation. Mother and dad are now gone. You fulfilled your responsibility. Your brother Casey is gone. And now you are free to do what you are called to do, and that is to minister. And you have nothing but your dogs and the ministry to take care of. I think you are retired. 